How is it going everybody? You're watching Then About Tech and Apple has just released the latest version of iOS 17, iOS 17.4, which is now available to everyone with compatible iPhones. So iPhone XS, XR, and newer. And please keep in mind that this is the fourth major software update to iOS 17. It sure is a major software update. There are a ton of new features, a ton of changes, improvements, bug fixes, and I'm gonna show you all. So let's get started. Okay, so iOS 17.4 actually has three major changes. One being the EU situation with the Digital Markets Act. We're gonna talk about that. Apple CarPlay 2, we're calling it that way, you'll understand it in a second. And also a big change in iPhone battery life. We're gonna talk about all that. So first, let's talk about probably the biggest reason why this software update actually exists, right? This is the main point. It has to do with the Digital Markets Act in the European Union. You have probably seen this. It's everywhere in the European Union actually made Apple change iOS dramatically. On very important points, uh, they were forced to change quite a lot of things. But please keep in mind that this will be only valid for European Union citizens. So not for all of us, just users that are based in the European Union. So the first big change actually has to do with the App Store. So now EU citizens will be able to download apps from alternative app stores, from third party app stores. As you know, until today, we could only download apps officially from the App Store, but now EU citizens will be able to download from Cydia like stores. So this is a big, huge change. On top of that, we have changes in Safari as well. So for the first time after updating to iOS 17.4, EU citizens will open up Safari and they will see a page asking what browser they want to select as the default browser. Okay, we don't have that option anywhere else in the world. And also we have changes in Apple Pay. So banks and other websites and other services and other companies will actually be able to choose different apps and different methods of payment apart from Apple Pay. When we're talking about NFC contactless payments before and for all of us in the world, if you wanna use contactless payment, you will need to use Apple Pay, but in the European Union, they'll be able to choose other apps and other options. This is a huge deal, guys. There are many, many more changes and many more details inside all of those examples that I gave you, and I made a dedicated video on this. I do recommend that you take a look at this card right here, link in the description, where I go through every single detail on all of those changes, and of course, I give you my opinion and what I think will actually happen in the future, not just for the EU, but for all of us all over the world. The second change actually has to do with Apple CarPlay. We're calling it Apple CarPlay 2 because it's actually the first major update to Apple CarPlay. So iOS 17.4 actually enables this new Apple CarPlay experience, which consists on a new interface, thankfully, and also eight new apps. And of course, a much well integrated gauge cluster if your car has a digital gauge cluster. But please keep in mind that this doesn't necessarily mean that as soon as you update to 17.4, you're getting all of those changes like that on your Apple CarPlay compatible car. We're not sure yet, but probably this will only take effect on newer models or maybe just on cars that are still to be released. So not just yet. We gotta wait and see, but definitely what you're gonna see now is not gonna be available to everyone, okay? Unfortunately. So let's talk about those eight new apps. So think of Apple CarPlay 2 as being the system of your car. So it's gonna manage your car completely, not just the media, but everything, that's the goal of Apple, right? So there will be an app for settings where you'll be able to choose and manage the settings of your vehicle. A car camera where you'll be able to actually manage all the cameras in your car. A charge app where you'll be able to see the battery status, your range, your charging details and everything like that on your electric car. 
On top of that, a climate app, of course, for your AC, your climate control, uh, your heating and ventilated seats and all that. A closure app, where you'll be able to manage if your doors are opened or closed. A media app, but of course, now completely integrated, not just with your iPhone, but also with FM, AM, Sirius XM, satellite, radio, and all of that. Tire pressure, where you'll be able to see your tire pressure, of course, and also get warnings if you have a flat tire, for example. And last but not least, a trips app, where you'll be able to see your consumption, uh, you'll be able to see your trips, how far you've gone, your miles, and everything like that. So again, the whole idea is that Apple CarPlay will do everything you need on your car and manage everything you need. Now, let's hope that many people actually get those advantages and all those benefits, but the thing is, iOS 17.4 is ready for it. Now let's talk about the third major feature which has to do with the iPhone battery life. So let's open up our settings and then scroll down until we see battery and then right here battery health. As you can see it's already a little bit different right? Tap on it and you'll see battery health normal, maximum capacity 100% in this case, cycle count, manufacture date and first use. So this is all new and I have to tell you that this specific new UI and new page is exclusive to the iPhone 15 series. But the most important thing is not this page specifically, is this information right here about battery and warranty. As you can see, the original battery was designed to retain 80% capacity at 1000 cycles. And this is actually a big deal, guys, because before iOS 17.4, it used to say 500 cycles. So just like that, Apple doubled the lifespan on your iPhone battery. Again, please keep in mind that this is exclusive to the iPhone 15 series and of course to newer iPhones to come. But what we're seeing here is a big change because batteries used to last 500 cycles, now we're seeing a thousand, that's double. Please keep in mind that I do also have a dedicated video on this topic. I'll leave a card here and link in the description where I go through everything related to this. I talk about cycles, I explain what cycles are, I explain what this change actually means and how it will improve your lifespan. How many years you may have now on your battery on this change. Please keep in mind that this software alone, iOS 17.4 alone, won't make your battery less the double. But what we're seeing here is that maybe Apple already had that change and then they were just waiting to release the information for us. Nevertheless, go ahead, take a look at that other video. I give you further details on this. Moving on, we have many more changes in iOS 17.4, starting with new emoji, as you can see right here, a new mushroom, phoenix, a lime, chains breaking and shaking hats. But not only that, if you tap here and go to your emoji and you go ahead and take a look at these ones, just a second, and there we go. Uh, these emoji that represent movement, right? Uh, as you can see right here, now we have both directions. So on 18 emojis, we have both directions. So before they used to go right, for example, and now they're going left as well and vice versa, as you can see right here, for example. So running left and then running right. And same thing here with other examples. So very, very cool, more possibilities. On the Apple Podcast app, as you can see right here, we have a new way to interact with our podcast, with a much more dynamic way. So if you tap on play, and if you tap here on transcribe, you see that now we have those kind of subtitles, like animated subtitles. So as you can see, it goes perfectly in sync with what the person is saying in the podcast. So super easy way to follow a podcast, especially if it's in a foreign language, or if you can't really listen to the podcast, now you can pretty much read it in this very well paced transcribe right here. It goes beyond that as well, because you can search absolutely anything on a podcast. So this is super nice, because sometimes you, you listen to like a one hour and a half podcast, and you remember this specific phrase, but you have no idea where it is in the podcast. Now you can just search 
and it goes straight there. Uh, on top of that, you can just go ahead here, for example, and browse anywhere on the podcast, like tap on it, and then it'll go straight there, talking to the exact point that you want. Please keep in mind that this new feature, uh, it's actually only available in English, Spanish, French, and German. So depending on the language of the podcast you're listening to, you may not see this, okay? Now let me show you something new in the music recognition feature. So I'm gonna go ahead here and use this other iPhone and I'm gonna play a song, as you can see, Frank Sinatra, Fly Me to the Moon, as you can see right here, I'm gonna play it and I'm gonna use the voice recognition feature to recognize it and I'm gonna show you what's actually new, okay? Of course, I won't be able to play the song because of copyright, but you'll see it in action, all right? So, what song is this? So, we got it, as you can see right here. Let's tap on it, as you can see right there, and then let me show you what's new. So, of course, it picked up, Fly Me To The Moon, Frank Sinatra, perfect. And what's actually new here is the fact that you can tap on the three dots and then simply open this in Apple Music and listen to it, add to your music library, add to a playlist and so on. So this is new and it's super, super cool and convenient when you are out and about, you listen to a song you like, you ask Siri to recognize it and then you're there in Apple Music listening to it. Still talking about Siri, if we open up settings and scroll just a bit down until we see Siri in search, now we have this new option with messaging with Siri where we can actually ask Siri to read messages, so announce and read messages in other languages. So for example, my iPhone is in English and Siri is in English, as you can see right here, but I can go ahead and add, for example, Portuguese. So then if I get a message in Portuguese, Siri will read it, even though it's not the main language set here on the iPhone. So this is super convenient for us that speak and talk to other people in multiple languages. If we go ahead here and come back to our settings, scroll down, tap on Face ID and Passcode, and then scroll a bit down until we see Stolen Device Protection. This is a new menu, actually. If we tap here, now we have the possibility to require security delay not only away from familiar locations, but also always. It's requiring Face ID, of course. If you have no idea what I'm talking about here, if you don't know what this is, I super recommend that you take a look at this video right here, link in the description. Trust me guys, stolen device protection is literally the biggest, the most important security feature on your iPhone. It was made by Apple exclusively to protect you uh, if in some scenario your iPhone gets stolen and it does really work. I have a full dedicated video on the feature in iOS 17.4. There's just the addition of this portion right here, but if you haven't seen it, go ahead, take a look, enable right now, you'll thank me later. Now let's talk about some US exclusive features, one of them for the phone and the other one for iMessage. So Apple verify businesses when they call you or when they message you, uh, you will now see a banner, right, on the call or on the chat on iMessage with their name, uh, with their logo and information saying that it's actually an official account for that business. This is super cool because uh, you know if you're getting a call or talking via SMS or iMessage to that company that it's actually that company. It's not somebody trying to fool you, it's not a scam or anything like that. And of course, you have more information on those iMessage business chats from now on when you're talking to those Apple verified companies, like for example, track orders and much more. And also, if you go to settings and wallet and Apple Pay, again, exclusive to the US, Apple Pay Cash now has this new feature where you could actually pay using Apple Pay Cash even if the merchant, if the seller doesn't actually accept Apple Pay. So you'll be able to go ahead here, open up your Apple Pay, right? Tap on the card. I don't have it because I don't live in the US and actually copy your card number. And then with that number and verification code and all that, you'll be able to make the purchase using Apple Cash, even if they don't accept 
Apple Pay. Uh, you'll be able to do it like manually, like we've always done for the past few decades. And now we have two minor bug fixes. Number one right here in the Find My app. So before iOS 17.4, sometimes when you were looking at people's location, sometimes you wouldn't see their photo right here. It would be white or black, you wouldn't see the photo, a small bug, but fixed in iOS 17.4. And also, if you use dual SIM, like I'm using right here, there was a bug as well that was fixed that sometimes actually caused your secondary line to actually become your primary one, which could cause a big problem, especially on mobile data, right? And also, uh, if you were talking to somebody on an iMessage group, for example, that second number would become your number and then those people would be able to see your secondary number, which is a big deal because, of course, a lot of people have two SIMs to have the secondary number as the private number. And then this was causing a huge problem. Now, that's all fixed. And then, that's it. That's literally it. That's everything new in iOS 17.4. Please go ahead and take a look at all of the links I left down below, because as I said, since this is a big software update, I made separate videos. So go ahead and take a look at those separate videos if you wanna see any of those things I've mentioned here in further detail, okay? So, if you are already running iOS 17 on your iPhone, go ahead and update to 17.4 right now, okay? I super recommend that you do so. No problems with this version and of course, a ton of new features. But if you're still holding on to iOS 16 on an older iPhone, stay there, stay safe, stay on iOS 16. That's the best bet for you, okay? So, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.